The project's aim is to combine sea otters and traditional art together to create an educational board game for all ages using research from my proposal and new research undertaken in the development of the board game. The aim of the board game is to teach people of all ages about traditional art. Sea otters and traditional art are highly underappreciated and from research it was clear that they hold great value to humanity in many ways, which is the reasoning their presence is in the board game. The scope of the project was decided through mind maps and research, with board games taking years on average to develop with a whole team and company. Therefore, it was decided that the project would aim to have a full working prototype that could be printed out and played and that if given more time could be refined by a production team and released as a full-fledged product for the market. The rules, layout and genre of the board game were carefully picked with research from the proposal in mind. The board game features a Monopoly-inspired look with a standard Europlay format for all ages. In the game, players roll a dice, move spaces and respond to events that happen on the board game. The main goal of the board game is to collect puzzle pieces featuring sea otters as traditional paintings. Players can combine the puzzle pieces to create full paintings. The player to complete the most paintings will win the game. To gain these puzzle pieces, players can either answer questions about traditional art trade with other players, pick a piece, or switch pieces for other ones on the board. All these actions are spaces on the board themselves. These roles were refined using feedback from peers and family in hopes of creating an easy to understand and friendly board game for everyone with an important educational aspect. To create an innovative way of distributing parts of the board game, a digital manual was created from ground up. In the industry, this would reduce the cost of production and encourage eco-friendliness. Sea otters are endangered species. With the, with the game heavily featuring sea otters, it felt natural to have an aspect of eco-friendliness. Over time, using prototypes, a manual was carefully created and formed, inspired by old letter writing. The introduction features a letter written by Leonardo da Vinci. The next pages feature the characters and stories assigned to them, with kelp decorations that reflect the environment that sea otters live in, found during research in the proposal. The rules and box contents pages feature a very simple minimalistic design. This was done to ensure the readability and functionality. The manual was created in Sketch and Procreate that allowed for freedom and flexibility with its great prototyping features and easy organization. The board game's main aim is to educate players. Because of this, a lot of the focus was given to the question cards. The game question cards are an essential part of the board game. Players will be asked questions using these cards about traditional art and if answered correctly they will be given puzzle pieces that can be used to complete paintings and win the game. Most of the questions were created using research from the proposal. Alongside using research from the proposal, outside research has also been done to expand the scope of the project and create a big selection of questions to avoid boredom from players and provide higher educational value. The question cards were created with simplicity in mind to favour functionality and ensure an easy to read experience for the players of motives taken from the board game to match the theme and look of the game such as the wave of Kanagawa and the blue shades taken from this painting. The game board was the most ambitious but important aspect of the project. The game board features heavy inspiration from traditional art with the wave of Kanagawa being the main aspect of the game board. The Wave of Kanagawa is one of the most famous paintings and has been recreated in media many times, making it easy to recognise artwork for all players, despite age and knowledge. The outline of the board game has been done using a dry ink brush. This was inspired by ink and paintings and to also show the variety of different mediums art can be created in. Secondly, the transparency of the 
game board was made to help players see the board more clearly, but has also been inspired by glass artworks. Please note that for the outline and measurements of the board game, a black template was used to understand where to draw the final lines. This template is from an external source shown on the screen. This is also the case for the fonts. When creating the logo, inspiration was taken from signatures featured on traditional paintings. For exploration of signatures, a font was chosen by Abba Daniel Studio that nicely complemented the rest of the board game and made the logo appear to be a signature of a painter. The story features four sea otters that are on a mission to restore traditional art. These paintings resemble the many paintings that humanity has created. However, humans are not aware that actually sea otters created our traditional paintings first. Since the paintings are underwater, strict and consistent restoration and care has to be done by the sea otters. This is where the players come in. As they have to restore the traditional paintings to ensure that generations of sea otters to come can enjoy traditional art. The characters and story were produced using research from the proposal. This helped me a lot in making sure the sea otters were accurately depicted. The research from the proposal also helped me understanding art restoration, since the sea otters in my game are art restorers. This has greatly helped me in writing and improving the story. On top of the research strongly influencing the story, present classes provided by the university in digital storytelling module allowed me to deeper understand story creation and use newfound techniques to create an interesting and creative story for all ages. The paintings were one of the most important aspects of the game, since in the story of the board game, sea otters are indeed the true creators of the many paintings we have. They would also be featured on the paintings naturally. To accurately and nicely replace humans with sea otters, it was important to use the research from the proposal on sea otters and traditional art. Alongside research from the proposal, I've also done more research such as looking into Susan Herbert's Cat Galore collection, which features sea otters as paintings such as the Mona Lisa. I was able to refine and create paintings that closely resembled the originals while keeping originality and difference. One of the most important things to note is that the backgrounds of the paintings were left unchanged to make the paintings easier to identify during the pro this process. The blending and the colours of the paintings were closely analysed to try and replicate a similar atmosphere of the paintings. 3D printing in this project was used to visualise how the player tokens could look in the real product. This was done using Fusion 360 Ultimate Acura and an Ender Fruit printer. Using these programs and the printer, I was able to create a minimalistic and easy to use stand for the board game tokens. Overall, my project was successful and I've created a board game that could be used and produced in a company environment and sold. The game provides strong educational value while effectively combining sea otters and traditional art in a new and innovative way to create a product that can be played by all age groups no matter who you are.